As we get into the colder months, usually people start relying on heat a tad bit more. You may light the fireplace or use electricity to power air conditioners and movable heaters. Resistive heaters convert electricity into heat, and if you've seen one of our other videos, you know electricity is based off of coal, gas, or oil generators. Resistive heaters are effective to an extent. For every watt, you get one joule out. However, there seems to be a new way of heating entering the block. Heat pumps, it's been quoted to be 300 to 500% more effective. Heating systems are one of the largest ways to rack up energy. In the modern age, everyone uses their air conditioner, and then once it gets brisk outside, immediately goes into using a heater. The United States alone uses about 1.519 billion kilowatt hours of electricity a year. The overall goal in all areas is to get away from fossil fuels. We don't want to keep relying on non-renewable sources of energy for the harm that it's doing to our planet and the possible fact of running out. As of now, the majority of our electricity runs on these resources. According to University of Michigan's Center for Sustainability, about 79% of the nation's energy comes from fossil fuels, 8.4% from nuclear, and 12.5% from renewable sources. These numbers are only discussing the United States. We've become so reliant on something that is hurting us every day. So if we could change this, even if it's only in certain sectors like air conditioning, then we'd be making a big difference. This is where we reintroduce the concept of conservation of energy. What is conservation of energy, you might ask? The common definition is stated to be the total energy of an isolated system remaining constant. It is said to be conserved over time. You cannot create or destroy energy. You can only move it. At first glance, it seems heat pumps defy this rule. How can something receiving one kilowatt be able to get three to five joules out of it? Those numbers would seem to show that we're creating more energy. In reality, that's not the case. We're just moving more energy. According to Undecided, heat pumps extract heat from the outside air or ground to heat the inside of a home or office building. They can also operate in reverse to chill your house, just like an air conditioner. They move the heat from inside your home to back into the ground or outside air. In essence, a heat pump is simply a series of heat exchangers, moving hot air out of the house during cooling cycles and hot air into the house during warming cycles. If you're interested in learning more about the future of heat pumps and how they're going to have a positive impact on the environment and our overall personal lives, please continue watching. Also, make sure you give us a thumbs up. To start off with, a heat pump that is so similar to our common air conditioning system already. They refer to it as an air-to-air -air pump. For these air-to-air -air pumps to be able to cool and heat, it needs a reversing valve. Undecided describe the heating mode as, in heating mode, the outdoor unit blows air over a refrigerant cooling through tubes, which boils at a very low temperature. As the refrigerant heats up, it begins to turn to vapor. A compressor is used to increase the pressure and temperature of the refrigerant and vapor. As the vapor moves into the evaporator, it releases heat into the room, which turns the vapor back into a liquid, and that cycle continues. The way it cools is basically the reverse of this process. Heat is taken from the inside of the home, turning into vapor, which is compressed and sent outside. Heat pumps are extremely flexible and can be used in underfloor or radiator systems. The heat pumps just need a bigger radiator to be able to reach the more square feet. These heat pumps are much better because they don't rely on natural gases and oil furnaces. Even though the heat pumps are great, there are some slight issues. There are some upfront costs that are a bit pricey, reduced efficiency in very cold climates, and lack of regulations. In the United States, an average homeowner can save between $815 to $929 per year by replacing an electric furnace and oil boiler with a heat pump. However, if you consider a natural gas boiler, the savings are lower since gas is so cheap, which means a savings of about $200 per year. The other type of heat pump is ground-to-air heat pump. The differences between the air-to-air -air and ground-to-air is simply geothermal systems. They work the same way as air-to-air, -air, but a liquid is circulated through tubes deep into the ground. Even though geothermal systems don't work as well as the classic, they can still save between 25% and 50% on heating and cooling costs. Heat pumps have more possibilities than just working as air conditioning, but also as hot water heaters, immersion heaters, and circulation pumps. These new hybrid heat pumps have a lifespan of about 15 years, 
and a return of investment of about 4 to 7 years, which is better than an original heat pump. These pumps are even smaller than the original pumps, so you can put them in different spots than just the garage, because they can fit in other spaces. It also seems to be a cheaper option than the traditional one. According to the Department of Energy, the average heat pump style hot water heater costs roughly $225 per year to operate, compared to $400 to $800 for many traditional tank hot water heaters. According to Energy Star, the average cost of running a hybrid electric heat pump water heater for a household of four is about $300 per year, compared to $600 for standard electric water heaters. These numbers seem to be enticing to do a change over anyone in the market. To wrap up today's video, as we move into the future of trying to move into completely environmentally safe, there are some concerns, but overall, positive impact. In the long run, we'll save money by going into products that do not emit carbon emissions. These products will stop using oil and other fossil fuels that we pay for already. In the beginning, any transition into new technology will cost more, as it does not have the support the traditional items we use do have. There are already some other crazy inventions being used with the heat pump technology, such as clothes dryers. You heard that right, dryers are becoming ventless. They started using refrigerant in the condenser coils, making them 28% to 50% more energy efficient in comparison to the regulated dryers we have in our homes. Like I stated before, the biggest con for this new type of dryer is the cost. It's about double the cost of a normal dryer. But items cost more in the first few phases. The ventless dryers have already become popular in other countries and places like Europe, but are starting to gain traction in the United States. A heat pump dryer costs less per spin according to Attainable Home. At the end of the day, the cost per load of laundry in a traditional electric dryer can be between 53 cents and 55 cents. A gas dryer comes in at around 38 and 39 cents, and a heat pump dryer spins in around 17 to 33 cents. These big changes are going to start affecting everything we do that's based in electricity, because of the overall expense change. Washington State has taken the lead in the movement towards these heat pumps, mandating these energy-efficient heating pumps, Gizmodo published. The code is a win for building decarbonization, and could help Washington meet its state goal of reducing building energy consumption to 70% of 2006 levels by 2031. The change goes into effect July 2023. The new rules effectively ban some standard HVAC systems, which generally run via furnaces that burn natural gas, largely methane, as well as less efficient heating systems that use electric resistance, like floorboard heaters in most cases. The few exceptions are for supplemental heating and for certain added heating systems in some of the coldest parts of the state. Further, under the updated code, 50% of the hot water in the new commercial and large residential buildings needs to be warmed via heat pumps. For a state to be pushing these positive changes, it's not soon for it to start manifesting in other regions as well. Washington is making waves and doing positive solutions to help our battle against climate change. It's much needed nationally, but also globally. If hearing about energy efficient heating is something you enjoyed, please watch our latest video, Can Seawater Save the World's Water Crisis? As always, please like and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching.